some people come in to the US without inspection or admission. That is, they cross the border without approval, either through the land ports, seaports, or airports. Um, most of us, I would say Africans, um, we are more of within the overstayer group than people who cross without approval. But in recent times, we are having people who fly in, who are coming through Mexico and are crossing over the border without approval. So maybe sometime in the future, this program would also tend to apply to them. But mostly it's for, as I said, it's for people who come in without approval at the border. So they were not inspected, they were not admitted, or they were not paroled. For such people, it's harder, there's a harder, harder path um, in attaining their green cards because they cannot just say for someone who came in, let's say with a B1, B2, meets a US citizen, gets married, adjust status. It's like boom, boom, boom. It's, it's a pretty straightforward application. The good thing about a parole is once it's granted, it's yours. So even if later on or subsequently the parole is revoked or it expires, the problem it meant to cure, which was you not being admitted or inspected, that problem is still cured for you. So even if we have, say, a new president or down the line, this program is discontinued, so long as you've been granted that parole in place, you can still go ahead to adjust your status because it's still that your that non-inspection has been cured with a grant of the parole. Guys, I welcome you live on SBTV International. You know, as you know, every week I bring a U.S. immigration lawyer uh, on my show. So if you're first time watching us, uh, make sure you tap on subscribe, join us, and then drop your comment. For further info, you can just contact her. And numbers are on the screen. So welcome on board to SVTV International. My name is DJ Nyame. So let me invite my guest on board. Um, lawyer uh, Abba. Um, Abba underscore immigration attorney. Lawyer, welcome you live on SVTV International. How are you doing? Oh, thank you, DJ. I'm doing well. And you? Great. I'm also good. I'm also good. Welcome on board. What do you have for us today? What are we going to talk about? Okay. So today is just uh, based on immigration news this week. Um, President Biden announced a new um, immigration program. And since then, I've had a lot of people call with a lot of misinformation. Some people even think asylum has, has been cancelled and all of that. So today I just figured, let me just have a quick breakdown on what the program is, who it applies to, and how you can take advantage of it. So that's what I want to talk about today. That's so nice. It's good. So over to you. Let's hear from you. Thank you, DJ. Okay. Hi, everyone. So I'm back. Um, so as I indicated earlier on, um, on Tuesday, um, President Biden announced a new immigration program for undocumented spouses of U.S. citizens. And I believe um, that people, children, and the DACA as well. But I, I believe most of us would identify more as um, US, spouses of US citizens. So that's what I want to break down. I want to talk about it, the process, and who it applies to. And then a little bit of a history as to why this program is being ruled out, what they are hoping to achieve with this program and the problem that we are hoping, I mean, as immigration practitioners, we are hoping it would solve for our clients and people who live within the US. So um, first of basically this, the first, pro the first part of the program, which is the parole in place is for undocumented spouses of US citizens and pe people who, who live with their spouses here who are trying to um, adjust their status or get their green cards. So what, what is the problem? Because we all know if you your spouse is a US citizen and you're married to them, you are automatically an um, immediate relative and you should be able to adjust 
So how is it that one is married to a US citizen and yet still there are barriers to adjustment and they cannot adjust for whom now there's almost like a new immigration program being rolled out for them. So the problem is some people come into the US without inspection or admission. That is, they cross the border without approval, either through the land ports, seaports, or airports. Um, most of us, I would say Africans, um, we are more of within the overstayer group than people who cross without approval. But in recent times, we are having people who fly in, who are coming through Mexico and are crossing over the border without approval. So maybe sometime in the future, this program would also tend to apply to them. But mostly it's for, as I said, is for people who come in without approval at the border. So they were not inspected, they were not admitted, or they were not parole. For such people, it's harder, there's a harder, harder path um, in attaining their green cards because they cannot just say for someone who came in, let's say with a B1, B2, meets a US citizen, gets married, adjust status. It's like boom, boom, boom. It's, it's a pretty straightforward application. For someone who entered without inspection, admission or parole, they, they have a harder path because for such people, they cannot just adjust status within the US. They need to go back to their country of origin and get an immigrant visa before they come back in. But herein lies the problem, because if you've lived here unlawfully, you accrue unlawful presence. So if you accrue enough unlawful presence of, I think, 180 days, then, you know, um, once you leave, you trigger a 10-year ban. So for such people, they need to go back. And once they leave, they trigger the ban unless they are granted a waiver within the U.S. before they leave. And the waiver is to be granted that waiver, you need to show that there's extreme hardship to your US citizen spouse or a parent who lives here. And you have to be granted the, the waiver before now you would have to go back to, and it's a long period of separation for families. And at this moment in time, in fact, I checked it up as at this morning, it's taking almost 41 months, almost three and a half years just for the decision or the adjudication of the waiver. So for people who entered without inspection, even though they have US spouses, sometimes they have US, um, US citizen kids, um, the length of separation, just because you're trying to get their green card, tends to be a bit difficult on families because you now have to, separate it, to be separated one spouse living outside of the country, whilst one either awaiting um, waiting out the ban if they don't get the waiver or now having to wait out the waiver before they can leave, give, getting the provisional. It's just really a lot, of, um, a lot of stress, a lot of paperwork, and a lot of additional steps and separation for families. So basically, this new program is being geared towards this group of people. And is, um, you know, the executive branch um, has the power to grant humanitarian parole. So the parole is for people who don't have a legal basis to either come enter the US or stay within the US. But due to humanitarian reasons, the parole is being granted to you. The purpose of the parole is for the people I described earlier, they have this huge hurdle of them being not being inspected or admitted or paroled with into the United States. And that's the reason why now they have to go through all that, all that process and going back and getting an immigrant, immigrant visa and all of that. So what the parole cures is, it cures that in a, inadmissibility for not being admitted. So once you're granted a parole, it is assumed that you were now admitted inspe or inspected into the United States. And once you get that grant and you clear that hurdle, now you can take the extra step of adjusting your status. So that humanitarian peril is not a visa, is not a decision, is not a green card. It's just um, a status where now 
you were initially, you were deemed, you were not inspected. I mean, you really were not inspected or admitted. But once you're granted the parole, that problem or that hurdle of not being inspected is cured. So you are deemed to have been inspected and now you can take the extra step of adjusting your status. So what this new program is trying to do is you is parole in place. So you are being paroled whilst within the United States. So you don't have to go outside of the United States. You have to stay here. You get the parole for um, a limited period. Within the parole period, you get your work authorization so you can work and then you take the you take the additional steps of adjusting your status because you are eligible because you're married to a US citizen. So that is what this humanitarian parole is made, is being brought in, or the parole in place is being brought in because with the parole in place, you don't have to leave. You're still within the United States. You're granted the parole, you get your work authorization, and now you take the step to adjust your status to get your green card. The good thing about a parole is once it's granted, it's yours. So even if later on or subsequently the parole is revoked, or it expires, the problem it meant to cure, which was you not being admitted or inspected, that problem is still cured for you. So even if we have, say, a new president or down the line, this program is discontinued. So long as you've been granted that parole in place, you can still go ahead to adjust your status because it's still that your, that, non-inspection has been cured with a grant of the parole. So this program can be, you know, taken away by a new president, but so long as you've been granted the parole, you can take the additional step to adjust your status. So what's the process or who, for whom, who can apply or who is being granted this discretionary benefit? So for families, for now, as I initially said, this was just announced on Tuesday. So we are waiting on um, Department of Homeland Security to come up with what the steps will be. We are, as practitioners, we are thinking there might probably be an application form, probably a fee to be paid and all of that. And, but we still, it still hasn't been figured out yet. So we are all still in the learning process and figuring out what, what is going to happen. But for this to apply to you, A, you should have been someone who is who has been continuously living in the US since June 17, 2014. And I say continuously on the fact that so if let's say you were here June 17, 2014, and you left and you spent two, three um, years outside of the US, and then you came back, let's say still through the border or something and without inspection and all of that, you will not be deemed to have been continuously living within the US. So you should have lived here continuously since June 17, 2014. You should have been physically present in the US on June 17, 2024, like a couple of days ago. So for this program to apply to you, you should have been in the U.S. on June 17, 2024. You should have been legally married to a U.S. citizen spouse as of June 17, 2024. That is a couple of days ago. So if you were not married to a U.S. spouse, let's say all of what I've said applies to you, but you were not married to a U.S. spouse as of like a couple of days ago, you cannot take advantage of this program. It's not now that you're going to go, oh my God, hi, I have to literally get married to my US citizen girlfriend, boyfriend, because there's a new program that has been rolled out by President Biden. No, that's the thing about these um, executive decisions or executive programs regarding immigration. It tends to have a start date and it tends to have eligibility for certain dates. So if I said, um, two, three days ago, you were not married to a US citizen spouse. Unfortunately, you cannot take advantage of this program. And you should have entered without admission, parole, or inspection at any of the ports. So let's say you rolled in from Canada. I mean, you literally just walked across the border and, I mean, you came into the US. If you're such a person, 
you since you came, you've been married to a US citizen, you've been here since 2014, you were physically here in like June 17, 2024, then you are ripe for this program. Um, in addition to that, you should not have been convicted of any disqualifying um, criminal offenses. So it's not all offenses that will disqualify you for immigration benefits, but there are some that if you're convicted on, you cannot adjust status or you cannot gain immigration benefits. So if all that I've said and you've not been convicted, you've been living peacefully, all of that, great, good for you. And you should not pose a threat to national security. That's a big one. So you're not part of organizations that they think, I mean, that are a threat to national security, just because of course, if you're here, you already know, they will run a background check, they'll do a social media sweep, all of that. So you should not be a threat to national security. And you should also meet a favorable dis exercise of discretion. As an application, they have to look at whether you fit it, and in their discretion, they're gonna grant you the parole the parole in place. So if you meet all of this eligibility criteria that I have listed, then once, I mean, we figure out when, how this program is gonna roll out, then you can apply. But as I said, if you came in with a particular, with a visa, or if you were inspected at the border or admitted into the United States, then this program wouldn't apply to you because for you, if you're trying to adjust status, you wouldn't have to go back um, and you wouldn't need a waiver and all of that. So it's just for the special group of people that I've spoken about. If you fit into the criteria, then hey, yeah, great. You are part of this program. Um, but being part of this also, getting the parole in place doesn't cure ineligibility that you already have. So if you're already ineligible to adjust or you couldn't even adjust if you came in with the visa, parole in place will not cure it for you. So let's say you were deported and you went ahead without inspection a second time, it automatically triggers a permanent ban. So for such a person, your permanent ban is not overcome by the parole in place. You cannot apply. If, if there are ineligibility issues surrounding your process, it will not cure it. And the good thing is if, you are a spouse and you, you have a child who is not a child, let's say the stepchild of the US citizen, you can add them as derivatives in your, in your parole in place. So it applies to them as well. So basically these are, this is the process. As I said, we are still waiting on DHS to come up with how to go about it and how to do the application for the parole in place. But I just didn't, there was just so much misinformation out there. So if uh, it, it might apply to you, just, I mean, work through, pull it up, Google about it, make sure you fit into this category. And then once they are ready to roll it out, I'm sure they'll probably come up with an application and all of that. You can go in there, download. If you think you need an, an uh, immigration attorney to help you with the process as well, that too, you can do that. Just reach out to anyone within I mean, that you're comfortable with to help with that. But basically this is, I mean, the second one is for DACA and unemployment. But as I said, I know for most of us, uh, the one that would really apply to us is being um, undocumented spouses of US citizens. So if you fit into this criteria, then this program has been brought so will cure the whole separation in order for you to get your immigrant visa and then come back into the US. For this program, you can stay within the US, get your grant of parole, um, get your work authorization, and then you can take the extra step of adjusting your status. DJ, this is just a quick, quick, quick information. Thank you. Thank you so much, lawyer Abba, uh, for having time for us on this show today. Thank you so much. Um, you can contact um, lawyer Abba, uh, Abba underscore immigration attorney on all social media uh, platforms uh, from Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. You can follow up. Also, you can call her uh, numbers are on the screen. If you are outside um, the US, you can just um, make sure you add the plus one. And then also you can contact her on WhatsApp too as well. What's your WhatsApp number? Because I know the 
number on the screen so on the squeeze back is a direct number so yeah. um direct calls so what's your whatsapp number is your whatsapp oh, number Jesus. active uh, for the direct calls by the end of this week i'll get my new provider will send me the new phone so i'll have it on whatsapp so for so, now it's direct calls eh? or they can message you on direct like, calls. message you on social media yes your email can. yes oh, okay. they can so if you need lawyer contact her uh, uh abba underscore immigration attorney lawyer thank you so much for having time for us today uh enjoy your thank weekend you. hope to see you and uh, next you. week this information you brought out today is important i mean well done keep it up good job thank okay you. <laughs> thank you DJ. thank you for having me it's always a pleasure <laughs> okay lawyer Enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for watching SVTV International. My name is DJ Nyami. If you want to come on my show, my numbers are on the screen. So just WhatsApp or send me a voice note that. Hey, Nyami, I want to come on your show. Wherever you are uh, in the world, any part you are, you can just come on the show. Link up. Um, I'll give shout outs to uh, my production team, um, DJ Click Sharon and Tina. Subscribe to our channel for more. Peace out. To, uh,